let's start. Um, uh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, and in this session, we will talk about the using tracing to tune and optimize the ES. I'm Neil Yan. I work for the Niaro uh, support and solution engineering team. And this material is co-worked with my technical leader, Daniel Thompson. So if you have any questions, just free need to bring up. I will try best to answer questions. And also, Daniel can help us some answer some questions as well. So let's see the agenda. So at the beginning, we will to introduce some background to uh, for the tuning for the e GTS and the ES. So we can get to know the difference comparison between these two technologies. So we can get to know why we need to move forward to use the new technology uh, technicals and the tools to tune for ES. Then we will to give a quick introduction for the tools for the NISA. Then uh, in the second part, we will to introduce two examples. So one example based on the multi-threading debugging, and another tuning is based on the single thread tuning, because the slide is very long. So if they have long enough time, maybe we can skip the second example, or give very brief, quick introduction for the second example. So the, for the third part, we will to give some further reading and we share the materials for the, this debugging, for the uh, script and the trace data, and also give more further reading for what you can do for the next step. Um, so this is, uh, this page is the typical workflow for optimizing the GTS. So we can see the GTS there have one um, big uh, uh, feature is that they have many tunables. So when you want to uh, tune the GTS, you need to set the tunables and run the benchmark and then get the result. And you need to adjust the tunables and run the benchmark again. So use this cycle to op do the optimization. So this simple, is, uh, this workflow is simple and it's very easy to for understanding. But uh, it will have some, uh, issues or problems in practice. The first issue is that tunables is complex because we know that the, they have tunables is for uh, task placement and the other tunables are for the operating point selection. So these tunables may be where to impact with each other. So which tunable you should to select for the one case, uh, maybe you, it's hard to uh, make decision for that. Another thing is that um, usually if you select the best combination for the tunables for one case, for, you, for example, for MP3 this case, but maybe it's not the best combination for another case, for example, the radio or gaming. So it's hard to find a unified tunables combination for all across all the case. The uh, last, uh, last issue is that for the GTS tuning actually usually is SOC specific. So when you want to do the optimization, you need, it's hard to up, do the upstreaming or uh, discuss in the public mailing list. So, and also it's very SOC specific. So when you have next generation SOC, maybe you need to do the next round of tuning. So this is for the GTS. So we can see this is just to give a quick um, 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 brief introduction for the tunables. We can see for the upside, uh, the part, this is the tunables uh, by the GTS. So they use the up threshold and the down threshold to the heuristics value set by your platform. And uh, they also have deliver other features like the, you can pack the task on single CPU or you want to spread task across the cluster. So in, we can see also in the, uh, below this part, there is the CPU frequency, the interactive governor, the parameters. So uh, the many thing is that GTS and the CPU frequency interactive governor, the parameters are cascaded. So they are, don't know what each uh, uh, other do something. So that means that you tune these parameters, you just focus on this 
part, but maybe it have potential impact on other part. But we have not to make a decision in the same place. So this is why we introduced for the ES. I think ES there have many difference between the GTS is that ES to make decision in the one place in the scheduler. So ES uh, there have no tunable anymore. So basically for the ES uh, unit we can see the workflow, the typical workflow in like the we would need to run the benchmark. We need to uh, uh, use the F-trace to trace a use case. Then we will to examine the trace data. And at this, uh, when we examine the trace data, we also need to get to know for the power modeling. We also need to know the ES implementation or the, uh, the core algorithm. So based on this, we can see that actually uh, in this step, it's very knowledge intensive. So you need to get to know so much in uh, uh, knowledge and information. So based on this, you can you need to find out what the issue, and you need to figure out what's the solution uh, fix to improve the make the decision. So basically, the make decision can be improved by uh, uh, two kind of things. The first one is that you can refine your power model. So we all we can see that you need to deliver a correct power model because the wrong power model may introduce the misunderstanding in the scheduler. So maybe scheduler where to select the wrong CPU or wrong open point for the task. So another thing is that based on you have a, a correct power model, you also need can do the optimization finding in the scheduler to uh, uh, do the optimization. So this is like that you can optimize for the, uh, uh, the single law or you can optimize for the uh, migration, the occasions. So if you have find the optimization uh, is in the scheduler is very common or general enough, so that means that this optimization can be portable. So you can share this uh, optimization for review in the public mailing list, or you also this optimization very likely can benefit for your next SOC. So, uh, for more, uh, we can easily to uh, uh, dive into the debugging. So now ES have provide a set of stock trace points. So this trace point, the we can see on. Uh, right side of the picture, the Patrick and the Yuri have committed the many patches and tagged as the debug. So this Yuri have some it many trace events for the ES, but this uh, patches have not posted to RKML. So now just uh, we can only find these patches on the production focus patch set. Uh, for example, the AOSP common color, or in the RSK, the production code nine. The branch. Uh, in the color, if we wanted to use the F-trace, we need to enable the color configuration, uh, configure F-trace. But this is just a uh, general configuration. If you wanted to enable the F-trace uh, point, you need to enable separately. So we can see next page the example. So we can see this is the trace point for yes, you only use. In, we can see in the mainline color by default, there have the trace point can support for the uh, tuning is paired single loads. So we can see the schedule, uh, dash node, dash average, dash the task and the CPU. These two trace points can be used to analyze the task and the CPU uh, utilization, the value. And uh, on the right side, we can see there have some uh, trace point can be used to analyze sites the scheduler behavior or the scheduling occasions, for example, for the context switch or for the task migration between the CPUs. And the, uh, we can see ES also have many the extension for the trace point. So for ES core algorithm, we can easily to use the schedule energy diff to get to low the calculation from the ES core algorithm 
for the task selection, what's the energy calculation, the value. Uh, and for the schedule over utilize this flag, this is just to indicate that uh, in the system, if the system is over the tip point or under tipping point. So tipping point means that um, any of the system, the CPU is over utilized. So CPU uh, utilization is more than 80 percentage of he, uh, its capacity. So that means that CPU is very busy in this situation. So in, you, this flag often gets too low, the system is, is overutilized a lot. So on the, also we have schedule tune, the trees point and the schedule freak, the trees point. Uh, but we, uh, it here I will not to extend for that because, um, the, uh, so for the uh, backend, uh, usually we use the trees command uh, start this command to uh, enable the trace point, so we can use the dash E and uh, following by the trace point, the name, and so we can enable them. This is just the user uh, command. In the NISA is the tuning tools. It can easily to extend to support this trace even uh, point. We, we can see the example in the next, uh, in the second part. So this is summary is for ES, uh, uh, the make decision strategy basically is based on very common uh, the power modeling. So it's not it's not uh, based depend on the heuristic uh, the input parameters. For example, the up threshold or down threshold. But GTS use the heuristic uh, threshold. So for the CPU frequency selection, we can see it also wanted to use the scheduler as the cent central place to make a decision. So. Now the CPU freak governor is schedule freak or schedule util. Uh, but GTS, uh, it used the governor's cascaded uh, parameters. For example, you can enable the on-demand or the interactive governor on your platform. So you need to tune the interactive or on-demand governor's parameters. Yes, also to uh, provide the scenario-based tuning. This is uh, based on the schedule tune. So schedule tune where to create a C group so you can put the task into the C group to set some boost signals for these tasks. But for GTS, they have no any uh, function for support for scenario-based tuning. So we can get a uh, solution in that, uh, conclusion in that ES has very few tunables and that's required a significant different approach to tune and optimize uh, compared to the GTS. So for, can, we can easily to debug the GTS. Now uh, uh, ARM have provided the uh, to you using NISA. So NISA stands for uh, Linux Integrated System Analysis. So uh, NISA, we can simply think that it's a distro of Python libraries for interactive analysis and uh, automatic testing. So later we can, we are to give the, some e example here. Um, so whatever uh, for both the interactive analysis or the automatic testing, NISA uh, supports uh, some functionalities. The first one is it where you can uh, do the target control and um, manipulation. So it, for example, you can use the NISA uh, devlib to set the CPU freak, uh, the governor parameters, and you can generate out the workload and the run workload. And also you can to uh, enable the F-trace and the, the trace point. Uh, another thing is that usually on the board we have the uh, power meter, for example, the arm energy pro uh, probe or the hardware monitor. So you can measure the energy or the power. So in the NISA, it also integrated the power management and uh, it can do the energy calculation. The third thing is that uh, after we get back the tr F-trace data, we need to analyze the F-trace data and uh, to plot the graph. So this is the another functionality. Uh, the, four, uh, the, well, the fourth the functionality is uh, good for the testing, uh, automatic testing, because if you want to add some uh, assertions, so you want to, for example, you want to run one case, you want to assert that the big task 
done to run more than 20 milliseconds, so you can add some assertion in the script, so can check if the test can pass or not. So we can see a very simple, this So this is the uh, Lisa um, uh, one example is a script. So basically, we we can there have several concepts. The first one is Jupyter. So from from my understanding, that Jupyter looks like we can think it as a web page based grid this environment. So you can see there have menu. You can do the edit or you can control the program. So another thing is that uh, uh, the uh, Jupyter will to send out uh, send uh, the program. You can see this Python program to the IPython kernel. So IPython kernel we can take it as the uh, Python interpreter. So it will to interpret the Python program and uh, execute the program. And then this file we can uh, take it as a notebook file. So we can think it as the source code for the Lisa. So in this source code, we can see it can have the documentation and also have the pro program code. So you can mix the documentation and the program code. And another thing is that when you execute this program one by one box, so finally you can see it will have the print out the log. So this log also will be saved in this page. So. Uh, we can see the below the here example is that you also can use the, it to analysis the scheduler singles. So this all this output will be saved in this notebook file, and it will be permanent to save the, in the host PC. So the good thing is that uh, when you next time you open this notebook, uh, this source file. The, all the information will be saved in this file. So you don't need to run the test again. You can just to see the previous the result directly in this file. So th this picture actually I copy from the Patrick's uh, slide. Patrick at the ERC, uh, uh, the conference, it has a presentation for the NISA. So if you want to get more uh, deeper understanding for NISA, you uh, suggest that you can refer the Patrick's slides. So here, I just wanted to give a very quick uh, workflow for the NISA. So for the, uh, both for the interactive testing or the automatic testing, we can uh, uh, need to uh, uh, do one, uh, configure the test. So you need to specify what workload you want to run. Another thing is that you need to configure for the uh, target board configuration. So we can see in the left side of these two box. One is for test uh, configuration and this is for target configuration. These two files maybe can be the uh, general common the uh, Python file. Or you can also use the, just now we show the notebook file to do the configuration. So based on this, we can see there have the workload generation is based on RTAPP to generate <coughs> workload. For example, you can specify the workload, the task run, the duty cycle, and the run how much time, the period time is how much. So based on this, it, they were to copy the file to the host uh, target board. So um, when the host PC to uh, connect with target board, it will need to use the dev nib. So in dev nib, it will to uh, support the connection. For example, use the Android ADB or use the SSH for general Linux. So also it can to support the uh, uh, operating for the CPU frequency or for the f trace in bowling. When one case have finished, then on the target board, they have trace data. So this trace data finally it will to co copy back to the host PC. So you can see in the host PC, there have the folder is a testing folder. So the trace data will be saved in the trace, uh, on the host PC, the trace folder. 
So based on the trace folder, uh, Lisa have provided another two libraries. One is Trapi. So you Trapi, uh, it can to uh, analyze this the data frame and to plot the graph for the trace, trace data frame. And also you can use the BART to do the assertion for the testing results. So this is just the, the interactive test mode. We can see you should to input the IP in the, uh, and the port number to connect with the IPython kernel. And you also, need, you can see there have menu and the button is control the program. And this is the uh, markdown is documentation and the program. The last one, this is the uh, log, log result. So this is very general info. So later we will to see more detailed information how to use this for debugging. Another thing is that usually we can see if we use NISA with analysis, uh, analyze the trace data. Usually it will have very global view for the single. If we want to uh, look uh, deep for the detailed information for the trace event, you can you uh, connect with the color shark. So color shark actually is quite simple. Is the, there have main window is for the task scheduling and the task migration. And in the uh, bottom, this part is very detailed information for every trace event, the value. And uh, uh, Color Shark provide the pr filters. So it can uh, provide a filter based on the trace event or task or CPU. So you can mask some uh, uh, event you are not very interested in, just focus on some uh, you are interested in the trace event. So in second part, we can see they have two work, uh, work it example. Uh, uh, before we uh, introduce the example, just give a quick uh, intro uh, introduction for the de development, the platform we use. Uh, so uh, the first thing is that uh, all these examples are artificial workloads to provoke a specific behavior. So this is not uh, the real scenario, the workload. For example, we run Android with some YouTube or video or other gaming case. We use the RTAPP or program to manually to gener generate out the workload. So in this case, that means that the scenario is very consistent. They have no noise. The good thing is that if we can reproduce some issue with this method, then the context is very clean. So it's very helpful for, for us to focus on to debug the specific issues. Mm. So um, actually in these two examples, we are debug on the 96th board uh, high key. So 96th board high key is the uh, Octo A53 to cluster SMP device. And every cluster have five op operating point. So here is one interesting thing is that high key actually is not a big little platform. It's a uh, SMP platform. The two cluster actually is exact in same. But uh, we, uh, we wanted to do some the big little em emulation on it. So we can do something is we can uh, uh, fake a fast slow system by using a symmetric uh, power modeling parameters from the device tree. So we can take the first cluster as a little cluster and we pass the parameters from device tree to tear the scheduler. The first cluster have lower uh, capacity and a, a higher power efficiency. And uh, we also uh, pass the, uh, uh, the uh, power, power modeling parameters for the second cluster as the big cluster. So um, here I have another thing that high key is very special is the two clusters have found, find uh, the operating point uh, from hardware. So that means you change one cluster frequency, it also change another cluster frequency. So basically if we want to decode these two clusters, it's very hard. But we want to uh, emulate, uh, simulate the second cluster is a big cluster. So it looks like it has a higher capacity. So we can do one thing that we can 
uh, artificially to reduce the runnable and the running time for the fast CPU so that uh, the metrics indicate that it has a higher performance. So this looks like that it, the task run on the second cluster have less time. So you, we, we just want to use this way to uh, uh, simulate this is a big, big little class system. So later we will to see most of the plots are just directly copied from the NISA. So, and also we need to where to share out all the uh, notebooks and the trace files, so give it the linkage. So let's see the task ping pong issue. Uh, for uh, the task ping pong issue, we can uh, we run the test environment is, um, we set the first cluster as the little course, then we pass the parameters as the Little course highest capacity is 447. So run at the highest operating point is 850 uh, megahertz. So for the big cluster, the big core highest capacity is 124. And the run at the operating point is 1.1 gigahertz. So here we have an assumption that we have uh, verify the, the power model. So make sure that the power model is correct on this platform is a correct big little power model. So this we can avoid the there have wrong behavior is introduced by the power model. So the test case is that we generate out there have 16 small tasks. So we can see there small task have the um, 15 utilization. So this utilization, this per percentage is responding to the little CPU's capacity. So this is not uh, corresponding to the big CPU's capacity. So we can, so finally we can get to low. In theory, the 15% uh, TV utilization multiply the 447, then we can get to know the UTL value is about uh, six, uh, 67. And we also generate out a large task run the uh, uh, forty percentage utilization. So we generate this workload. We want to do one thing that you can see. They are have uh, sixteen small tasks. So, so if this uh, sixteen small task spread out to four little CPUs, then then every CPU will to uh, run about sixty percentage of the utilization. So if we migrate this big task to any one of the NATO CPU, we can see that the NATO CPU will uh, get the 100 percentage the utilization, so it's very busy. So as a result, we expect the result, like we want the small task can be always run in the NATO CPU because we want uh, can power saving. But for the big task, we want the scheduler can be filled out. This is a big task. We can migrate this task to the big cluster to run. So this is what we expect. So before we uh, go, uh, go to see the debugging, we can first need to uh, uh, look, uh, review the general flow for uh, the analysis steps. So for the first step, we want to run the task uh, uh, workload and generate out the trace data. So for the second part is that we have get the trace data. We want to do this analysis. So we, uh, we uh, first to see the step one. For step one, it will to connect with target. So it will can use the NISA test event, uh, this method. And uh, after it connect with target board, it can to general generate the workload, so it can use the NISA's uh, RTAPP, the method, to run the workload. <coughs> so this first step, uh, first step, and uh, here I have one thing that there have platform description file is a pi uh, platform just in this file. Usually we use this file to tell NISA. Uh, you can help draw some information, for example, the uh, cluster capacity, so it can use this information to help him, Lisa, to draw uh, plot in the graph, the CPU's highest capacity is the level. So 
this is uh, used by the st second step is uh, analyze the trace data. So the first thing is that it will to read the trace data and to generate out the F trace the data frame. So based on this, this is just the raw data or they have uh, no any analyze. So based on this, it we need to do something that, for example, they have multi thread they have many, many tasks. So we wanted to figure out, filter out some task we are interesting. Maybe it's a big task or maybe it's not a big task. So it is, uh, finally we can use the ELISA there have a uh, 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 method is trace analysis. So it can do help do the analyze task single loss. So first we can see this is script to do the connect with the target board. Well, uh, connect, uh, connect target board, they have two configurations. Though the first one is the, for the target connection, the information, for example, this platform is Linux or Android. So it will use different connection method, IDB or use SSH. So also you can import some modules, for example, the CPU freak. This CPU freak is not means that the kernel mode, this is means that in the Lisa library, it will to enable the uh, function to support to operate for the CPU freak, the parameters. So uh, after that, you can see if you use SSH, you can use, uh, need to input the IP address of the target and also need to input the username and the password. So there have one thing in that for calibration. The calibration is used for the RTPP to run the workload loop. So RTPP were to generate out the workload with the loops, but usually it, it don't know how many cycles it should to run for the workload because every different CPU, it, they have different capacity. So usually you can input the parameters in here or NISA can automatically to do this in by, for every CPU. So you need the high capacity CPU where have less the lot of second per loop, the, this value. So we can see if the high capacity CPU will have less value. And for the, uh, the second part, we can see this is for the testing configuration. So which command or which binary tools you should to copy to the target board. So because we would need to use the RTAPP and maybe we should to use the task set to specify the CPU affinity and we need to en enable the f event, so we need to use the trace command, this binary. So this is where to tell NISA which binaries you want to copy from the host to target board. And uh, here we can see it's very easy to enable the trace point. So for example, there have the scheduled node, the single loss you want to analysis, uh, analyze the paired single loss, or if you want, you can add any single loss you are interested in and you can set the buffer, buffer size. So based on these two configurations, we can, you, can, you can call the test event, so it will to connect with the target board. After the connect target board, you can run the uh, workload. So first thing is that we need to define the workload. So on the left side, we can see we wanted to generate out uh, 16 uh, small tasks, and we wanted to generate out one big task. So for the little task, we can see we define that this is night, this value. The duty cycle is a 15 percentage, and it will run five seconds, and the period, every period is five milliseconds. So this is for the small task. For the big task, we can see it will to have the duty cycle is a 40 percentage, and it will run five seconds. So use this, based on this, we can to execute the workload. So first thing that we need to enable the F-trace. So we can use the F-trace dot start and we can enable the energy, uh, the capture the energy data. So we can use the uh, energy uh, dot reset. So at this time point that the context have been ready. So we can use RTP run. So it will to execute the left side of this workload definition. So this will to generate out they have 16 tasks, small tasks, and uh, one big task. So after the task has been finished, then 
will return back. So at that time point, it will to uh, stop the energy parameter, the capture, and also it will to stop the F trees. So we can see it here, it will to copy the F trees data from target board to the PC side. So after this, we can get uh, uh, the trace data to analysis. So usually we can see that uh, if we have run the task, task case, we want to quickly get a, quick, a global view for the task placement. So one thing that we can to do that is the color shark. But in the NISA, it also have provided the similar function, like you can plot the trees. So it here you can see you can specify what event you want to extract from the tree fire. And uh, uh, also you can specify the, uh, the window because maybe the F trace data is very lar large. So you maybe want only to uh, analyze just the specific, the time window. So you can also specify it the window, the parameters. So after that, you can use the function, uh, the method is plot trees to display the task placement graph. So here we can see, this is just the get uh, first uh, glass is that uh, they have the four little CPU is from zero to three, and they have four big CPU is from four to seven. So during this period, is we are running the uh, workload so you can see there have many tasks is running on the big uh, little core, but also there have many uh, events that have happened in the big core. So this indicates that uh, there may be have many migration or scheduling happen on the big, big, big core. But actually, if we see this graph, we can get more detailed information how to analysis. So. This is why we need to do the second step is we need to do more detailed analysis for the trace data. So first thing that NISA have provided some by default the functionality. So first thing that we can to open the trace data by NISA trace, this, fire, uh, this function. And uh, it also have provided the filter this functionality. It can help you to field out the big task for example. So we can only focus on to anal analyze these big tasks. Then NISA also to provide the functionality, the trace analysis the functionality. So it will to help you easily to display the task singles. So let's see the, the first one is that we just to open the F trace data. So here you can see that uh, uh, it, uh, we need to use uh, trace this method. So uh, it will to input the platform JSON file. So you can see it here, it will to have clearly the def defined for the um, CPU topology. So there have two cluster, every cluster the CPU ID, and there also have the frequency. So you this way. So this information will pass into the Lisa and Lisa can use it to plot for the graph. And also you, you need to uh, pass the trace data, the file lane, and you also need to input what the trace event you want to do the analyze. So here also it can support, for example, if you use the F trace or you use the C trace to generate out the trace data. So this is to specify, specify the trees format. So the second step that we have opened the F trace data. So next step that we based on the trees this handle, we can do the filter. So we can to define the big task, the criteria in this case. So for example, in here we define a very low criteria. For example, we wanted to analysis want to analyze their the maximum uh, the 15 biggest task and uh, the every task and the minimum unitization is 10 and uh, at least they have 100 uh, sample data for this task so use this 
uh, function, we can easily need to get to know they have top task in this app trees. So we can get to know they have, maybe they have another uh, work, uh, work queue, the, the, the thread, and also they have other tasks. We can have ta task zero one, this is big task, and they have small tasks. So we can use the trace analysis, this function to help to uh, analyze the task, the single loss. So here we need to use the functionality to port the tasks. So it will to display not only one graph, it will to display uh, multiple graph. So first graph is that the trace analysis graph is for task residency. So for example, at the beginning, the task uh, initial value is uh, utilization initial value is 124. So that means that uh, this task have the 100 percentage utilization. So it's a very big uh, utilization. So after where we can see that uh, the green, this scatter point means that this CPU is placed on the little CPU. And the red point means that the task can migrate to the big CPU. So we can see there have many ping pong issue between the two clusters for the task placement. So this means that uh, there have many migration between the two clusters. So uh, trace, uh, trace analysis graph also to display the task paired single law. So there have two single laws for us to uh, to check. The first one is the UTL average. UTL average, which just means that it use the paired algorithm for the task running time. So this means that how much the running time for the task occupy for the CPU. The, there I have another single law is uh, displayed by uh, the uh, blue, th this line. This is the node average. So node average actually is the value, uh, uh, the sum of the running time and the runnable time. So runtime time means that the CPU has been uh, switched out. So there have other tasks running on this CPU. So this task need to wait the CPU time. So you need, here you can see there have the difference between the uh, uh, UTL average and the load average, these two single loads. So um, one difference may be because this task has the higher priority. So we can see for load average, it is not only just to uh, accumulate for the running time and the runnable time. It also will be multiplied for its priority or its weight value. So, but even if the task, the priority is less zero, means that the uh, weight value we can think of it as one. So it will not multiply to a big value. So in this case, the difference between the node average and the UTL average, this means that there, this task has weight for other tasks running on this CPU. So the difference is more higher. That means that there have much congestion on this CPU because there have many schedule latency happening on this C task. So uh, we can see this is just for the, based on for the task this level. If we compare the task level single low with the CPU level single low, we can get to low that. Actually this task, the utilization, this level, is less than the little cost tipping point. So only this means that for this case, this CPU, the little CPU can meet the, this task, the performance requirement if they have no other tasks. Uh, but if they have other tasks, then they have more congestion on the little CPU. So we can see node average have increased much more. So that means that in this case, the little core cannot meet the task requirement for the performance for this task because there have many congestion CPU occupied by other tasks. So uh, 
uh, in this case, that means that you need means that the task, uh, some task should be migrated to other CPU. So w this is just we check the task, uh, uh, the singles. So when if we want to uh, uh, invest it further more for the uh, for for this trace log, we need to get to load some in implementation for the ES algorithm. So for ES the algorithm, the core uh, code like there have one flag means that is the tipping point or the overutilize. So if the overutilize is false, it will to enable the ES pass. So when ta when it enable the ES pass for the uh, find the busiest group, this function will be called by the load balance. So you can see it will to directly to return back. So it will a lot to run the load balance, the code. So it will a lot to migrate the task between the two clusters. Then for the yes, the, uh, this is the enable for the wake up pass. So in this pass, we can see the task will run for the energy aware, we have CPU this code. It will uh, not to select the idle sibling. But after the system there is run over the tipping point, means that their CPU is overutilized. So in this case, that means that some one of the CPU is very busy. So the methodology is they want to spread out the task to different CPUs. So in this case, it will to, uh, for the node balance, we can see it will a lot to written back directly. So it will to execute the find the busiest group, this function. So finally, it will to do the node balance, the, the, the work. So finally, it will to do the, uh, maybe migrate the task across the different cluster. So for here, in the task, we can pass, it will not do energy aware pass. Because for energy aware pass, it will to select the most power saving CPU. But do the SMP node balance, it will to find out which CPU, uh, the CPU is the idle sibling CPU to, to run. So uh, here, here actually for the code, it will just to find out the most scheduled domain, so it means that it will find out the same cluster CPU to run. So this is just the, for the code. When we connect with the code, <coughs> we can do some analysis that maybe this, uh, uh, this, this issue is caused by, there are um, many issues is caused by, introduced by the tipping point because after the over the tipping point, we migrate the task to the big core and then after the end team point, and then task will be mic'd back to the little core. So this is, we suspect this may be the impaction. So we need to figure out uh, this is the pattern a lot. So we can write, uh, do some more analysis. So this here analysis is that because Lisa usually, uh, it have provided very strong the functionality, but uh, sometimes maybe you can, can you can, uh, find that Lisa took it and uh, include uh, the plotting function you need. So you can write a plot function yourself. So here is a special case that overutilized single law is not a per CPU, it's just a global single law. And you also you want to, uh, um, to uh, uh, analysis for the task placement for the big, uh, the, the big task. So you want to connect these two different single law in one plot to see if there have any connection between these two single law. So you can write the, the functionality by yourself. So we can see this is the one uh, uh, hint is that uh, the red line means that the tip point, when the tip point red line is one, means that it's over tip point. So it's over utilized. So when it overutilized, we can see the task is migrated from the CPU three to CPU four. So this means that the CPU have migrated from the native CPU to the big CPU. Then when the uh, team, uh, team point is zero, so means that it is under team point. 
So in that time point, we can see the task migrate from the CPU 4 to CPU 3. So basically, this is just the one very short period you can see the task migration. But this is the pattern you have found. So you can apply this pattern to other time period. You can verify if this is a very consistent pattern or not. So finally, if we find that this is a very consistent pattern, then we can look for deeper, uh, more detailed information for the trace event. Um, so, uh, so this is, uh, we can see here is that the task is migrated from the CPU 1 to CPU 4. So this is what we expected because this means that this task, uh, we want to migrate to the big, big, big cluster. But there have two issues. The first one you can see after the big task have run on the big cluster for where, but it migrated to the NATO Core. So this means that not we expected because we want this task can be always keep on the big cluster. Another issue is we can see it here. The next time when the system is overutilized again, it will not migrate the big task. It will to migrate the little task to the big cluster. So this is also another uh, issue, <coughs> the behavior we don't impacted because, because we always want to field out the big task and to migrate the task to the big cluster. So we can see that for the uh, summary for this issue is over 10 point means that any CPU, the utilization is uh, bigger than the CPU capacity multiply 80 percentage. So for example, this is little core capacity and the 80 percentage capacity of the NATO's core, then if its UTL value is 80 percent, uh, 90 percentage, then we can see that this CPU is overutilized. The same is for the uh, big CPU. And for the under 10 point, we can see that means that all, all the CPUs, its utilization value is less than its uh, 80 percentage of its capacity. So issue is, if over the team point, we can see there have many small tasks migrate to the big cluster. And also, in some cases, we expect the big task also migrate to the big cluster. But after the system under team point, we can see that the, all the tasks also migrate back to the little cluster. So you can see there have many ping pong issue. So how do you fix it? So the fix is we wanted to uh, field out the small task to avoid to migrate to the big, CP, uh, big core. And uh, when we have migrated the big task to the big core, we want to avoid to migrate the big task back, back to the NATO cluster. There have another uh, fallback uh, scenario is that, for example, you have migrated the big task to the big cluster, if the cl uh, little cluster is very idle, so in this case you need to distinguish that the uh, little cluster is idle. So you need to migrate to the task uh, can migrate back to the little cluster. So this is a very special case. So here is some fix for, for this issue. First thing is that for the node balance, we need to use some criteria to fill out which task is a small task. So it here we define the criteria is that the task running time is less than one of four NATO CPUs uh, capacity. So this task will not be migrated to the big core after return zero. So this means that for the uh, node balance between the two cluster, if we return zero, that means that this task will not migrate to the big uh, cluster. So this will give more chance for the big task to migrate from little cluster to the big cluster. Another thing is that we change the criteria for overutilized. So here we need to uh, uh, check in the system team points uh, by, uh, we need to replace the check system team point by, we need to check the cluster level the busy a lot. So if the system, if the cluster is busy, then we will to spread out the task. Or 
if the uh, cluster is very idle, then that means we might to uh, fall back to migration the big task to the cluster. So it here we wanted to uh, do one thing that we will need to check the cl cluster is busy or not. If it's not busy, then it will to re return back uh, uh, zero. So that means that uh, the every task need to go to the energy aware path. So in here, energy aware path will to help to select CPU. But for another case is that we also need to do decision based on the task, this is never single law. So if this task is a very small task, that means that we must make sure this task can be run into the energy where the pass. So make sure that in wake up this pass, even the cluster is busy. But we also want to the energy where pass can help the this task to do the uh, to to do the decision. But for the big task, at this time point, we don't want to uh, do the uh, big task. We not to make decision at here. We just make a decision at the previous page because we need to check the cluster is busy or not. Big task, if a cluster is idle, then we will to net the energy where pass to help make a decision. But if cluster is busy, then big task will not to do energy where pass. It will to do the, do the select idle sampling the function. So finally, you can see after apply these three patches, you can see it can fill out this big task and the, all the small tasks will be run on the neat core and the big tasks on the big core. Okay, so uh, sorry, m maybe we need to skip the second example. So uh, this is pretty sim uh, simple compared to the first one. So if you have any question, you can offline to send an email to me. So here I have related material, uh, all the f data and the Python notebooks and uh, for the platform JSON file have shared on the uh, file server dot .nilaro org, And also all the, the first three patches for the first example is uh, fixing and the fourth patch is for the <coughs> second example has been posted on the ES dev mailing list. So you can check. And for next step, actually, you can debug the scheduler. So try to focus on the decision making, not the packings, because now you have two, you can analyze it. And also, the new decisions uh, should be as generic as possible. So basically, this is based on the normalized units. So not just the hacking. Also, you. It's very common that you can share out this optimization in the public mailing list for the review or discussing. And also here I was saying that uh, uh, you should to understand in the trace point patch and the tuning from the ARM, uh, the tuning tools from ARM. So uh, this you can directly get the NISA library from the GitHub. The it does, they have another one thing actually also is very important for the debugging is that schedule tune. Because schedule tune is to provide the use space, uh, the interface to net the use space can inflect the task level single law or the CPU single law. So what's the inflect the boost value defined on your platform is a platform specific. So you need to make the uh, trade off because that means that you want to achieve some performance benefit, how much power you want to pay for the performance boosting. So this is trade-off. You need to define this by yourself. So without the tools, it's hard to define the debug schedule tune. So you need to enable the NISA on your platform and for debugging, and finally you can find the uh, parameters for your platform specific. So, have any question? Okay, thanks. <laughs>